Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Winnie Van Lanningham, and with the recent changes to the new Captain America film's title and release date, and the release set photo of Harrison Ford and Anthony Mackie, we've got a lot to talk about. Today, I'm catching you up on everything you need to know about Captain America Brave New World, and speculating on what Harrison Ford's role as the Red Hulk means for the MCU. As soon as this picture of Ford as Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross and Mackie as Captain America dropped, eagle-eyed fans noticed that Ford's pants are looking a little torn up at the knee, hinting at Ross's gamma ray radiated form Red Hulk. As all classic Hulk fans know, shredded shorts like Ford's have been the Hulk's signature garment on the pages of the comics since his character's debut in The Incredible Hulk issue number one in 1962, and have followed him through the majority of his subsequent animated and live-action roles. When ComicBook.com's Brandon Davis interviewed Harrison Ford recently about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Ford gave an incredibly cryptic response as to whether or not we'd see Red Hulk in Brave New World. He just goes, what is the Red Hulk? Classic old guy answer. He later remarked that the Red Hulk's first live action appearance may or may not be included in the movie, which makes me think he was just playing dumb about his character's transformation to throw us off his trail. So what is Red Hulk, as Harrison so eloquently asked? Hulk Volume 2, Issue Number 23 is the best place to start reading up about Ross's transformation into the Red Hulk. Ross narrates a recap of several different comics from the 1960s, so you can get the abridged version of his character history in this issue. Highly recommend reading it before the new cap drops. Long story short, comic book Ross has always viewed Hulk as a weapon of mass destruction and vowed to take him down at all costs. He attempts to level the playing field by acquiring superhuman abilities like the Hulk's, which leads to his death. In the aftermath, the leader reanimates him, and when his daughter Betty is killed, the leader seizes the opportunity to exploit Ross's vulnerability. He'll ensure that Ross is put in charge of running the country, and will bring Betty back to life, but Daddy Thaddy has to help him take out the Hulk. Modok, the leader, and Doc Samson siphon energy from the Hulk's body and channel them into Ross, turning him into the Red Hulk. Red Hulk has basically the same powers and abilities as the regular Green Hulk, with the added advantage of being able to transform back and forth between his two forms at will. He's also a sponge for absorbing absorbing energy, and too much of it can overcook him and his immediate surroundings. Allegiance-wise, Red Hulk oscillates between anti-hero and villain. He's been an Avenger, a pawn of the leader, and most notably, the leader of his own Thunderbolts team. As for Harrison Ford's Hulk, the shorts and the quotes aren't my only indication that we'll see Ross Hulk out, with Tim Blake Nelson reprising his role as Dr. Samuel Stern from 2008's The Incredible Hulk. There's no doubt in my mind that we'll see these two play out parts of their comic book storyline on the silver screen. The MCU is notorious for working in bits and pieces or even entire plot lines from the comics into their movies and TV series. Feige basically uses the comics as a roadmap to guide the MCU to new, never-before-seen places. But if you haven't read up on the Hulk in a while, I've got the scoop for you. Sam Stern's origin story as the leader can be found in Tales to Astonish number 63, where he recounts the gamma radiation accident that transformed him. Working at a chemical plant, Sam is exposed to extremely high levels of gamma radiation when a cylinder explodes. He gains heightened intellectual prowess, and eventually his head balloons out like a watermelon and his skin turns bright green. He uses his heightened intellect to become a criminal mastermind, and even has the audacity to ruin Betty and Bruce's wedding. If Tim Blake Nelson shows up to my wedding and just starts going nuts, I'm gonna hulk out too. And while I don't think that the MCU is gonna follow every single detail of Ross's complicated history with the leader, I do think that several important plot points will draw on inspiration from the comics, with Kevin Feige's confirmation to Entertainment Weekly that Harrison Ford will be playing Ross as the President of the United States, my theory is that we'll see the leader offer to enhance his ammunition against Bruce Banner's Hulk by transforming him into Red Hulk like he does in the comics. Not sure if the leader is gonna try to reanimate Ross's dead body, but after Multiverse of Madness, I'm hankering for more MCU rotting corpse action. With Liv Tyler set to return as Betty, we could see Ross become the Red Hulk to save his daughter, or even bring her back from the grave. We also we also know that Ford is going to reprise his role as Ross in 2024's The Thunderbolts, which will show Val's little collection of supervillains going on missions for the United States government. And I wouldn't be surprised if they utilize the leader's influence over him as president in this movie as well. And considering comic book Ross's experience leading a version of The Thunderbolts, he might just tag in and show the team how to get the job done. Next, we gotta talk about the updates made to Captain America's release date and title. The film's new release date is July 26, 2024, only a few months after its original slated 
a date in May of the same year. It's taking the slot of the Thunderbolts, which has now been moved to December 20th, 2024. But the biggest change is in Captain America Force title. Marvel decided to nix Captain America New World Order in exchange for Captain America Brave New World, likely due to the former phrase's roots in racism and anti-Semitism. However, in the past, Marvel has presented us with sneaky alternate titles to throw us off any potential plot spoilers that may lie in the actual title. Most famously, Marvel originally told us that Captain America Serpent Society was the name of the movie we now know as Captain America Civil War, because Feige, quote, didn't want to blow his wad by presenting the actual title so early in his announcement. Brave New World alludes to Aldous Huxley's dystopian novel of the same name from the 1930s. This book tells the story of a future society that environmentally engineers its citizens' high intelligence in order to form a more perfect world. Scientific achievements and reproductive technology, sleep learning, psychological manipulation, and classical conditioning have allowed this world state to control its people. Except the protagonist who sees through the bullshit and works against the system to regain true free will. This literary illusion seems to be a much more accurate way to hint at the themes of the movie. Not only is there a brand new Captain America navigating life in the aftermath of his best buddy Steve Rogers' death, we know from recent MCU installments, like Wakanda Forever and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, that Val is working with the CIA to build a team of super-powered individuals to do her dirty work behind the scenes. She's already convinced Johnny Mayonnaise that he deserves revenge for the way the government treated him, and that the super soldier serum he took was a good thing. Baby Girl was is definitely planning to gain control, and is clearly manipulating vulnerable, susceptible heroes like Walker and Yelena to help her succeed. As she said to US Agent, the world is changing. She just leaves out the part where she's the one changing it, and that she's definitely trying to change it for the worse. That's all the news I know for now about Red Hulk, Brave New World, and The Leader, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at WhitneyPuppy, follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love, and thanks for watching. Bye!